This video is meant to be a supplement for the Houdini courses offered at Becker College and Lesley University. In this video, we're going to talk about how to animate the group nodes uh, that we use to set points to active and inactive. Now, the setup I have here is from a previous lesson where we were setting up active and inactive directly in the geometry network. Um, but what we found is that if we want to animate the location of these group nodes so that certain points become active over time, uh, we get a it seems to, we seem to get a more predictable result by doing that in the DOP network itself. So I'm going to just remove these four nodes, my attribute wrangles and my group creates from the geometry network. So this is basically back to just being a standard rigid body fracture. And if I play it, we see everything just falls. So I'm going to now set up a active and inactive switching method or methodology over in the DOP network. So I'm going to come into the DOP network and let me hit the L key to lay this out so I can see everything a little bit better. And right now we have the RBD object coming into the rigid body solver. So what I'm going to do is just set up the or, or add the nodes that we need here at this level first, and then we'll hook them together and then tr hopefully that will help us visualize what's gonna happen here. So what we wanna do is we wanna add a multi-solver. So I'm gonna go to the solvers category, and this is getting cut off from the screen down at the bottom, it's the multiple solver, this one, multi-solver, or it's called the multiple solver in the list. So I need that, and I also need, let me go up a little higher here so that maybe this doesn't get cut off. I'm gonna right click again, go to solvers, and I'm going to add a SOP solver. So basically what we'll have to do here is we will need to put them in line. Well, I'm gonna disconnect my rigid body solver because this needs to be connected in a different way. So I'm gonna hold down the Y key and disconnect it there. So basically what we need is the multi-solver is gonna work as like as a blender. And it's gonna blend, oh, let me do it this way, <laughs> juggling these around. Uh, it's gonna blend from the SOP solver and send whatever the SOP solver tells it to send out. It's gonna send that over to the rigid body solver. So the connections we need here, if we look at the multi-solver, its first input is, is looking for an object to be processed. So that's where I'm gonna bring in my RBD object. Uh, and then I have the merge node here in case I have more than one RBD object. And then the SOP solver has to come next. So it's executed from left to right. So that we go to the SOP solver next, and then we hook in the rigid solver like this. So that's what our connection looks like. Now, if you get these wires crisscrossed, you can uncross them by just selecting the multi-solver and rearranging here with the little blue arrows, much like a merge node. So basically what this is saying is we have a RBD packed object. And actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to static by default. So if I select that RBD packed object, over here where it, it has its initial object type, it says create active objects. I'm gonna set that to a static object. So what that means is when the simulation starts, nothing's going to move. And then in the SOP solver, we're going to use group nodes in there to pass stuff out of the group node as active pieces. And so once, once they enter that group and then they, they'll get passed out of the SOP solver and then into the rigid solver, and then they'll continue to simulate as active rigid bodies. So the SOP solver is sort of like our switch or if then statement where it's saying, okay, look for objects that are in this group node. Once they're in that group node, pass them to the rigid body solver. So we have these connections here. Again, we wanna make sure that we set our RBD packed objects initial type to static. And then the multi-solver has to come back into the network here and be merged with our ground plane and then into gravity and then through the output. So that's our initial setup here at the DOP level. Now what we need to do is go into the SOP solver and set up our group node that will determine when objects become active and get passed out of here and over to the rigid solver. So I'm gonna double click on the SOP solver 
And there's a couple nodes in here, but the one we need to be concerned with is this very first one called the DOP import, and it says geometry. So it's basically bringing in our, our geometry objects. That's why it's a SOP solver, a uh, surface operator. So uh, what I need to do is create a group node in here. So I'll, I'll add my group node, and this group node is gonna determine what's active. When objects enter this group, we're going to set them to active. So if I select the group node, uh, by default, the group node is selecting the whole group because it's, it's at the base level here, or base group level. I'm going to disable that, and I'm going to enable the keep and bounding region, which basically just gives us a, a volume select to determine what's in that group. Um, I'm also going to set the group from primitives to points. And then what I can do is I can animate this. So I think what I'm going to do is put it up above the box like this, and I'll make it large enough to encompass the box. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate it so it just passes over the box from top to bottom. And then what it will do is as, these, as the fractures enter that box, that group box, the bounding box, they will become active and be passed over to the rigid solver and and run as an active rigid body. So I'm gonna place it up here. And if we look at my, over here in my keep and bounding region, we can see that when I move this, it's, it's actually changing the center Y value. So that's what I'm gonna to wanna to animate. So in frame one, I'm going to alt click on my center Y value and we see it turns green, meaning it has a keyframe. And then I'm going to go down the timeline, however long I want this animation to occur. I'll maybe go out to frame 96. And I'm going to push this down over the object, maybe not all the way down to the bottom, but close. And then I'll come over here to my center Y value again and alt click on it to set another key. So now what I have is this animated group node here. All right, and again, just to double check this, uh, I should give it a name, an appropriate name. So I'll do, um, oh, let's just call it, uh, I guess I'll call it points active. I'm gonna spell that right, points active. And I'll copy that and paste that into the group name. So again, the group name is the important name here because that's what our next node, which is the attribute wrangle, that's what it will reference to pass those points over to the rigid solver. So the next node we have to put in is an attribute wrangle. So I'll right click in here and go to attribute and choose attribute wrangle. And I'll connect that from the group node. And then in the attribute wrangle, uh, we need to tell it what group to affect. And since there's a group above it with an appropriate group name, I can select it from right here group points active. So again, just like we talked about in the other lesson uh, relating to active and inactive points, whatever VEX expression I write here will be limited to this group, whatever points are in this group. So the expression is I at active, I at active equals one. So what we're saying is once points enter this group, they're going to become active. And again, as we mentioned before, the, uh, to translate this into English, we're basically saying the, the integer named active is now equal to one for any points that are in this group. All right, and that should take care of it. So we, we don't need to declare uh, points active and then points inactive like we did in the, the other lesson uh, when we were building this in the geometry network, we just need to simply uh, create and animate these groups. And then whatever's in the group, we set it to active. Now, the simulation won't run here at this level. I need to come up to at least the DOP level to see this working. And I'm going to hit the play button. And we see over time, they start to fall because they're becoming active. And I can stack these group nodes, just like we did in the, um, the example with the geometry network. 
I can add more than one group in here if I'd like. So um, actually, I'm going to come back and edit this one. So um, I'm going to maybe remove these keyframes and reanimate it. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and just select across the timeline to grab these keyframes, right click and delete them. And now uh, I think what I'll do is I'll have this one, this box just slide down this side a little bit. So let me animate that. Again, I'm going to be animating it on the center Y. So in frame one, I'll set I'll alt click to set a key. And then I'll come out here to maybe frame 72 and slide it down the wall like this and set a key. So now I have this one group that will activate those points. And now I'm going to create another group. So I'll do a, uh, another group node here and wire this in just in line like this. And I want to make sure that I'm working at the points level and I'll give it a name. I'll call this um, points active right because this is going to be on the right side of the wall at least from where i'm viewing from so points active right i'll copy that put that into the all important group name and instead of using the base group i'm going to use a bounding region and now i need to just get this one in place so i remember this side is falling here uh so i think what i might do is well, let me also put my display flag here so i can see it i'm going to have this one come in from the right side, sort of like this. So I'll put it off the edge there a little bit. Now I want this to occur, start to occur a little after the left side collapses. So I'm actually going to come out here to maybe frame uh, 30. And I'm going to be animating this one on the center Z. So at frame 31, I'm going to alt click basically just holding it in that position all the way out to frame 31. And then I will maybe take, oh, about two seconds for it to work its way across, maybe to about right there. And then I'll alt click at frame, I'm in frame 97 to set another key. So this one will stay in place from one to 30 and then slide across. And then what I need to do is I need to come down to my attribute wrangle and I need to add that additional group into the groups to be affected by this VEX expression. So since I have another group up here with a unique name, I should see it in the list. And I do, it's getting cut off right here and that's the points active right. And we can see that there's, there's the one group and there's the other, oh, uh, and then there's the other group. So now if I come back up to the DOP level and play this, I should get two collapses happening at different times. There's the one side and then the other. Gives us a really nice effect. So um, this is the second method that we had looked at in class for uh, animating our group nodes. So we want to do that in here using this SOP solver, multi-solver methodology.